Video for real estate agents. If you're not investing your time into creating video, your business is going to die. In this video, I sit down with Trevor Jones, a Hollywood film editor turned real estate agent, where he drops some absolute bombs going into the top five videos every single agent needs to be recording in 2019, as well as some tips, tricks, and tools to help you level up your business with video content. I'm super excited to share this with you. So without further ado, let's introduce you to Trevor and it's time to get schooled. All right, everybody, what's up? We are back with another episode, and I'm super excited to introduce you guys to Trevor Jones. So Trevor is the guy that embodies video content, and this is something I speak time and time again about, but this is a guy that has truly embraced it and has used it to explode his business as well as others. So I'm excited to have Trevor on here. We're going to school you guys about the importance of video content in 2019 as well as what kind of videos every agent needs, not should be creating in 2019. So Trevor, welcome, man. What's up? Thanks, man. Excited to be here. Can't wait to share. The thing is, I, I love talking about video. So this is this is fun for me, man. Definitely, man. It's going to be good. And, you know, people hear it from me, but it's good to hear from someone who this is their bread and butter. You know, I try and dabble with it, but you're the expert. So I'm super stoked to share this. So, you know, if anybody's been living under a rock and doesn't quite know you, why don't you give just a brief little introduction about, you know, how you got started in the real estate business and then why you took video by storm? Yeah, well, here, here's the short version. Hollywood editor for 18 years doing basically marketing, marketing big movies. The last For the last eight or nine years, I was working at a place where we did basically commercials for Marvel and Disney movies. I mean, like, you know, Cars and Captain America and Thor Ragnarok was actually the last movie I worked on. And so I was working on big stuff and people, one of the questions people think is like, dude, you had a dream job. Why would you, why would you leave that? And I was an employee sitting in a, in a cave, a 10 by 10, 12 by 12 cave every day with no windows. Great company, great people, still in touch with them. But it was, I was done. It's like, you're, I was capped. There was nowhere to go. And I you know, was making good money, making six figures, it was good income. But I, I didn't like being a slave. I love video, but I didn't like being somebody else's slave. Having to hit up my, my producer who was like 20 years younger, and he's like, hey, is it okay if I go home early because my daughter's got a concert or whatever? It's like, no, nah, I hated that, man. I need to be my own guy, right? So my wife and I got our licenses, you know, like four and a half years ago. And I was part-time. She was full-time. And a year and a half ago, I got laid off, man. I'm like, sweet. I was going to check out in six months anyway. So I got laid off. And... I looked at the landscape out there and I'm like, dude, nobody's making videos. I love making videos. In fact, believe it or not, I would rather work on my own videos for my real estate business, market updates, whatever we'll talk about the kind of videos we make, than work on Captain America or Thor of the Avengers. It's, it's way more fulfilling for me. So I just jumped all in with video and we've been, you know, we when I was part-time, she was full-time in 2017, we did okay. Then 2018, we basically doubled our income by, you know, by doubling down on video. So I'm super pumped about video. I, I love doing it. I, you know, I'm divided now. I'm, I'm teaching other agents to do video, which is, I'm super passionate about. I love vlogging. I love all the big YouTubers, man. I'm like, I don't like TV is not a thing for me. My way I veg out at night is like, let me check out a Casey Neistat or a Peter McKinnon video oh, yeah. or some of these other guys, you know, that's like, that's kind of my jam. So I can, I can connect with 14 year olds cause we all watch the same content, you know? but it's, uh, but I just love it. And it's, it's the future, man. You, you gotta be making video. If you're not making video, you're going you're gonna to miss the boat. I couldn't agree more, man. It's really cool that you said that you were, you know, you were at a stable, you know, quite a substantial job previously and decided it wasn't enough because I got that, you know, I got some pushback when I left engineering because I was an engineer. And again, I was, you know, reaching six figures early on and doing quite well. And then I quit because I felt like, you know, I couldn't re uh, you know, push myself to achieve any potential. Can you hear those dogs? I'm sorry. Can you hear those dogs freaking out? Uh, just a little bit, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But uh, you know, I couldn't get creative and I knew that I had a buzz in me. So, you know, before we get into the importance of video and also some of the top videos that agents should be creating, here's something that just kind of came to my mind because 
I really struggled with video when I first got started. When I first became an agent in spring of 2017, um, I was so afraid of being on camera and recording videos yep. that I used to set my GoPro up on my kitchen table and for 30 minutes, seven days a week, I would record myself and rewatch until I got comfortable. Do you have any tips or tricks for oh, people yeah. that aren't comfortable with video in order to get the ball rolling? 100%, man. I mean, the best place to start is the universe evolved to make this easy for us because everybody's common, quite, common complaint people say is like, I don't like how I look. I don't like how I sound. I don't know what to say. I don't feel comfortable. I just, I, I, I stutter in him and ha. It's like, get an Instagram stories, man. They made a platform for you to practice. It's 15 seconds long. It's gone in 24 hours. If you're not on Instagram now, nobody's going to even see it. Get an Instagram stories, do a couple takes and keep rolling. Just every day go, hey, just it, this is Trevor. Just wanted to tell you what's going on in, in Simi Valley today. Just give them something. Give them something of value. You know, it should be 80% personal, 20% business. Let them know you're an agent, but don't go all crazy like, hey, we got another listing. Got another clothes. Hey, if you need an agent, I'm your guy. Like, nobody wants to see that, dude. Yeah. You know, be a real person. You know, you know the grill, man. People 100%. connect with people they know, like, and trust. And Instagram yeah. stories is where you slay it. Get Instagram stories or Facebook stories, or Facebook Live, twice a day for 30 days, and pretty soon you're like, hey, I'm just talking to a person. And, and I, you know, I did voiceover before too, I still do a little bit, and the one thing that is asked for more than anything we're doing professional VO is talk to a person. Don't be like, hi, this is Trevor, watch Toy Story 4. Like nobody <laughs> wants to see that, man. They wanna see just a regular dude talking. So just the way I'm talking to you, the way you're talking to me, that's how you need to talk to the camera. Don't try to be all, and even, dude, even I with a video background and professional training in voiceover, when I first started making videos, you can look back at my first videos, right? From just go search, you know, reverse order. And I had the suit on and I'm like trying to sound all professional, try to either memorize or read my whole script. And it was terrible, man. Oh yeah. You just gotta be a person. These millennials, they're not stupid, man. They don't wanna watch some guy that's reading a script. You just, gotta, you just gotta be yourself. So get on stories. That's that's my that's my advice. Wow, man, that's amazing. You like echo exactly everything I preach. I tell people, you know, stories are live because live is forced discomfort oh. and you have no way of backing out then. And then I love that you mentioned the like, known trust factor because that's the exact thing I pitch with content creation and everything like that, man. So I think it's amazing. And you know, one of the big things that transitioned in my mind is I watch a lot of YouTubers as well, mainly in the car industry and you know, I always used to think I was looking at some professional that's recorded, but when I realized the vibe of it is them talking directly to me as a friend, that's when my life changed because I used to think that I was looking into this camera trying to be a recorded professional. But when I realized that I need to speak to you and you were the camera, that's when everything changed and that's when everything became more natural and, and organic because, you know, the audience is, is on the other side of that. Yep, hundred percent, man. That's that's everything. I was just watching. Do you know who um, Amy Schmidt Tower is? Yep. Yeah. So I was watching. I like. I'm driving, traveling. I'm listening to videos. You're listening to YouTube videos while I drive. And she's like, she's like, create a person. She named her person Charlotte. She's talking to Charlotte when she's talking to yeah. the camera. You got to talk to a person. When I was doing voiceover training, they're like, you got to. Who's your avatar? Picture them. What do they look like? What do they sound like? Who is it? Maybe pick somebody you know and talk to them. Yes. 100% man, you, you absolutely nailed it. So, you know, once people get comfortable with, with getting on camera, why exactly is video so powerful? Because for me, I'm a very analytical guy being an engineer and I know that, you know, the algorithms for almost every social platform actually credits video content and it ranks it better and things like that. But That's there's also, yeah. yeah, but there's also so much in terms of a deeper level where, you know, personality comes out and things like that. So why do agents as a person to person business need to be using video versus just, you know, bus benches and, you know, flyers and things like that? Why is video king? Well, obviously, you know the answer, but I'm going to tell you the things you already know. The best way to have to create a connection with somebody is to be there face to face. Yeah. Right? And we can only talk to so many people face to face every day. On the phone, we can talk to one person at a time or get hung up on or not get answered one person at a time. I mean, I got a thing now, 
on AT and T, it says AT and T, you know, scam alert, or not scam alert. What is it? Um, telemarketing alert. So you yes. know a scammer is calling you. Somebody's trying to sell you something. And I, I get these calls constantly. I just want to punch somebody in the face. Don't know who. It's like, do I want to be that guy who wants to get punched in the face to, to get hung up? No. One person at a time that's going to ignore you and hate you. And make a hundred and you'll sell a house. And I get it. People do cold calling and it works. But I, I can't freaking do it, right? Yeah. With video, you are a person. You're like, you can see you. You can hear you. You can almost taste and smell you because your personality comes out. You're creating a connection with people. I mean, I had a guy that he was a, uh, this guy, a guy named TJ. He was a Facebook admin and I would post videos in his group. I'd never met him in person, never talked to him on the phone. He saw our open house signs like, dude, I had to meet you. You're like, you become like a celebrity on there yeah. and people want to connect with you. They want to meet with you. They feel like they know you. I mean, you watch your favorite TV shows and, or your favorite YouTubers and you know this, but they become your friends. Even though Casey Neistat has no idea who I am. It's like, dude, we are buds in my mind. That dude's moving from New York to California, 40 minutes from me. He's doing it to be my bro. You know, I can't wait to hook up with him and do collabs with Casey Neistat. You know, it, yeah. there is no better way than in person to connect with somebody than with video. It's the very best way. And like we talked about, it's no like and trust. And it's not about pitching yourself and how awesome am I? And look, I did a million transactions last year. Nobody cares. They want to know you're a regular person like them and people do business with people they like and feel a connection with. 100% man. You know, I like the fact that you mentioned the realness aspect of it because for me, some of my videos that resonated most with my audience was actually when I became vulnerable and showed sort of the negative side of things where, you know, my, my highest converting Instagram story was when I was going up for a $4 million listing against the top agent in my city that's been the top luxury agent for 10 years. And I basically recorded a story before going into the presentation, not after saying, Hey, you know, I'm taking you guys on this journey. I probably won't get this listing, but I'm going to give up my all. I'm up against the top dog. Yeah. And it became real. And you know, the fact that everything becomes so real, I find, and I'm sure you can resonate with this is now when I go into listing presentations, people do think they know me and feel like they know me. So now it goes from a pitch to a consultation because they've already made up their mind that they like my personality. They, you know, they want to work with me. It's no longer this cold interaction where I'm trying to pitch why I'm the guy. Yep. hundred, hundred percent, man. It's all of it. hundred percent. So, you know, now let's talk about for agents that want to get into video, what are some of the types of videos that they should be creating to get the ball rolling so that, you know, if they're uncomfortable, they want to be making the most of their content creation time. So how should they get started? And then as they get the ball rolling, what types of content do you find works best in terms of building brand and attracting new clients and, and over time? Yeah. I mean, first of all, I find that a lot of agents don't have any idea where to start exactly. and they feel like they need, you know, you got to have the blogging camera and the microphone and the expensive gear. And the reality is just so people know, all you need is this. Yeah. And like you said, Instagram stories and, and, and Facebook and Instagram live and even YouTube live. I mean, those, those are gold and just get on camera and start delivering value. But as, as far as specifically the kinds of videos that get, the most views, the most engagement, and the most, the highest converting. It's, here's, here's one I did last year. It's where it was 100% a give and nothing about me. It's like my, I had my wife on camera. She's like, hey, we're doing a, uh, we're gonna, we, after the gym, she's like, hey, just follow me over to this Christmas tree lot where this high school is selling Christmas trees and we're gonna make a video for them. Like, what are you talking about? So just, just come. And so I just shot some video and, you know, and put together something and, and really through the process, I'm like, what am I doing? I didn't even know what I was doing. I didn't know what they wanted exactly. And then I, I learned as I was making this video and shooting a little bit that this high school has to raise 200 to $250,000 per year to keep their musical department going. And they needed promotion to help promote this Christmas tree lot, which is where they make, you know, like, you know, 30, 50 grand, you know, big chunk of their money every year. And so all we did is promote them. And that video and like nothing, no branding. It was all their branding. I think Leela had like a Keller shirt or hat or something. That was it. Yeah. And we got like 10,000 views on Facebook and a bunch of views on, on YouTube. And we'll probably do a few transactions this year 
from you know one of our agents. We have a small tool. We have an another agent on our team, and and he had kids that went through. I'll probably do two or three transactions this year. You know, from that from that one video, and it's because it's a hundred percent a give. And here's here's the key. What do people care about? They care about their kids and their pets. Make videos that support and get permission with there's kids in there. Of course, but, but kids and pets. That's a total. That's a total give. Whether it's you know a high school booster club, some kind of a fundraiser, an animal shelter. I mean, animal pe animal people like they're free. My, one, my daughter is is a is a foster coordinator at a huge animal shelter. Those people are freaks for yeah. what it, what they're into, and I don't mean that in a negative way. They're like they're passionate about animals. They're passionate about kids. Make videos about that. Make it a full give, and it's like, hey, I'm just making a video to promote you guys. And it'll come back. Everybody thinks oh, it's me, me, me. Don't forget me. I'm a realtor. Ah, don't do that. Just give. That's number one. Yeah. Um, and number two, videos that talk about your city, the top reasons to live in Westlake Village or Simi Valley or Moore Park. I've got one that had I don't know how many views on Facebook a bunch, but on YouTube I got like like 2,500 views on YouTube and. Just if you're, I don't know how savvy you repeat your viewers are. I know you know this, but a YouTube view is worth about 10 times what a Facebook view is because as you're scrolling through your Facebook feed, videos start playing. And if somebody stops for three seconds, say, oh, I got a view. Yay. And they might have not even been glancing at it. Right. On YouTube, they got to be looking for about 30 seconds is my understanding. And they got to click to see it. So this is a, a more engaged viewer. So YouTube views are worth a lot more, but you know, I do both. We can talk about that if you want. But top reasons to move to Simi Valley. And you give the top reasons and make it a fun video. Boom, those are going to slay it. There's a couple guys on a, a YouTube channel called RETV. Do you know Tim and Colin? Uh, no, guys? not yet. <laughs> okay, that's, that's another channel you want to, another, uh, another Facebook group you want to check out. Those guys are awesome. Um, one of them made a video, you know you're from x town if right and they made it kind of funny so you yeah. go all these locations you know and you show all the funny things about i haven't i've been dying to make one enough time but those kill it i mean this guy had like 60 or eighty thousand views on facebook because he made a funny video about a town and this is in a town of like fifteen thousand people you see, I, I have a friend who just made that same video for calgary for my city yeah um and in within 24 hours, he had 280,000 views. It wow. Went viral. Just kind of poking fun because out here in Alberta and Calgary, you know, it's a yeah. city. But the stereotype, because we have Stampede coming up next week, is uh, that everybody's driving big lifted dualies and things right. like that. So right. he just ripped on everybody like that. And it went nuts on Facebook. That's a kill. I got, have you made one yet? Not yet, but it's I need it. that's my challenge because it takes a little time. You got to plan a little bit, but dude, that that kills it. So that's the second kind of video I'd make for sure. Um, you just keep going on on five. Yeah, if you can do five, that'd be awesome. Because and then okay. we'll afterward. I'd like to rewind and talk about YouTube because I love how impactful what what you kind of said there was. But we'll keep okay. Going on. Okay, let's go. So the next third most important is local business videos, business videos, B two B videos, and the key for that is you want to find the businesses that have a big social media presence yeah. and then you go, Hey, I'd love to make a video and promote your, promote your company. And then you interview them and then boom, like we did one for sub zero ice cream. Our, we know the guy that owns the franchise out here. We did one there, but corporate liked it and they shared it nationally. So it got a ton of attention, you know, everywhere because you know, there it's got a social media presence and make them short and sweet and fun. I mean, I see people that get on there and they're like, Hey, um, what's the name of your business? Yeah. What are your hours and how much is a taco? You know, it's like nobody freaking yeah. cares. It's like, give me your story. I mean, yeah. we can talk about that later, but I mean, my, the, the hashtag for my, my video business is story matters most. Get their story and engage them and keep it moving, man, because people have the attention span of a gnat. Keep it moving. And if, and if you're watching the video and you're getting bored watching your own video, power tip, get rid of it, man. Get rid of that chunk. Keep it going until you're like, ah, dude, I love my video. I wish there was more. You know, like, dude, I is it bad to say, I love watching my videos. Like I can't get enough of them because I make them fun. You put your heart and soul into it. Some people are like, Oh, I can't stand this. Like, you know, after a while I, I love watching them. You got to keep 100%. them moving, keep them fun. And so if you're doing people that have a big social media presence, guess what? Your audience just doubled. It's got all my followers on all my platforms and all my database, which I email with all my videos. And I got all that guys, all that guy's followers. You know, who are they going to, who are they going to call? Who's that? Who's that business owner going to call me to sell his house? Right. Exactly. So that's, that's number three. Another one that's huge, another one of my bigger YouTube videos, place of interest videos. There are, yes. go to a popular place 
And there's places, whether it's hiking beach, mountains, trails, biking, whatever, go there and do a video about that. Because people are always looking like looking for A, things to do, which is kind of another category even, and B, oh, what about that beach? Like, and there's, there's a beach that I went to as a kid called Leo Carrillo. Movies were filmed there. It's a fun place. It's got memories. I got history there. I've been scuba diving there. It's a totally cool beach. And that video just blew up on Facebook and on YouTube because everybody loves it. And all the movies that were made there and stuff. So I put little movie clips in there and stuff to make it fun. So places of interest. Then where movies were shot. In fact, I just did a market update. And if you heard of the, you're you like a third my age. But have you heard of the movie Poltergeist, right? From like yeah. 1984? When were you born? What year were you born? 92. 90, right. So okay, this is a way <laughs> old movie. But you've heard of it. Yeah, One yeah. of those black and white movies, right? So Poltergeist is in the main city I serve, Simi Valley. And so I go in front of that house at night with creepy lighting and I do the market update. And I was a little freaked out because somebody lives there, you know, and I didn't yeah. ask permission. And at the end, he's like, hey, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm making a video, bro. Yeah. <laughs> but I did a market update in front of there because it's a place of interest, of a course. famous place in Simi Valley, right? So that's number four. And number five, and this is something you should do for every video you ever create. You want to create videos that answer questions people are asking. And as I'm sure you know, Google is the biggest search engine in the world. It owns the second biggest search engine in the world, which isn't Bing or Yahoo. It's freaking YouTube. And if you could say, hey, YouTube, what videos do people want to watch? You can. Like, ask YouTube. It'll tell you. You just go to, you know this, go to the search bar and you type your city, type Calgary. And if you type Calgary, then it's going to show you the top 10 things search for for Calgary. That's where you start. There's a bunch of tools, but make a video about one of those or an offshoot of one of those because that's what people are physically typing in the search bar. And if, you are type, and if your title is the same as that, you're going to get more traction. Now, there's tools like, like TubeBuddy and vidIQ and keywords everywhere. They're going to help you like dial that in more. But you should always make a video that people want to find. If you're making a video that nobody cares about, nobody's going to watch it. It's not going to help your business. And, and like one that I did is like, and then another way to do that is you know what your clients are asking. They all have the same questions. Answer those. Ask a client specific. I asked my daughter. I got a daughter that's in her, that she just turned 30. I'm like, hey, Rachel, what's a video you would watch? She goes, like, I'm a millennial. How do I get my first house? I mean, how do you get your first home for millennials? Boom. People love it. You know, we just, we just closed the transaction. Was it Sunday from somebody that watched that video? How do you get your first home for millennials? They're millennials. We love them. Vincent Kelly. And it, dude, it, it works. That's the those same, are, those are, those are the top five that I, I would suggest. I'm like having so much fun right now because you're saying like, I'm like an advocate for vidIQ and keywords everywhere. Like Google something with keywords everywhere for my city. And then suddenly there's like 50 freaking amazing oh. topics ranked for you. Yep. Um, you know, and I like the, the perspective that you have on going to places of interest because that's always one of my keys for trying to find video content is what would I personally be interested in? Because you know that you're not the only one and that others are. So. Yep. You know, one thing I'd love for you to touch on too is YouTube, because I made a video maybe a month or two ago about the importance of realtors being on YouTube, because I find, you know, agents are starting to put videos on Facebook and put some on Instagram and they're ignoring YouTube. But what I find personally is that if you are even relatively active on Facebook or Instagram, that video is basically, you know, in the archives by next month, whereas YouTube grows over time. And I find that, you know, I've got videos that I posted. I put out one of the first videos on how to get your real estate license in Canada because it's vastly different up here than in the States. Um, and that video has just grown like a bad weed. And that has basically been the majority of my subscriptions on YouTube. Um, and that's when I realized the power. So maybe touch on the, the importance of video for agents also uploading that to YouTube as a valuable library resource for, for their Oh, sale. totally. Yeah, I mean, you, you, you kind of said it already. Instagram and Facebook are amazing, great platforms. You need to be there, but they are not search engines. Anything you post is going to be buried in, you said a week, probably a day or two. Yeah. Nobody's ever going to see it unless you keep sharing it in groups, which is something I teach people to do. But it's going to be gone. It's like, okay, that's good for like now. Oh, yeah, they just saw another one of Mike's videos, you know. But you want to create evergreen content. You want to create videos that people are going to see two, three, four, five years from now and go, 
oh, that Mike dude, he made a killer video about top reasons to live in Calgary. Look at that. Oh, yeah, I'm going to move there. I'm going to call that guy to buy a house. That's going to get you business for years to come. Facebook, you, you know, two, three days max, but you can get years of interactivity that way. And you also get subscribers. So they're going to get, if local people are going to get pinged when you upload videos, if you get them to tap that bell, it's yeah. going to be vastly more valuable than, than a Facebook video in the long term. And the more videos you have out there, the more engagement you get, the more YouTube is going to promote you, and the more you're going to grow in the rankings. If people search things, you're going to be more likely to appear. If you type um, Simi Valley Real Estate Market Update, the top nine out of 10 videos are mine because I've been posting them. You know, it's like, what's going on in the Simi Valley Real Estate Market? Boom, it's all me. If you type top reason to move to Simi Valley, number one video, that's, that's me. And I only have like, you know, a little more than a thousand subscribers for my local real estate channel. You don't have to be huge. And that's, that's another, or another thing. You don't have to be PewDiePie or Casey Neistat to make money as a real estate agent on YouTube. You got to get five people to watch your video and one person to call you or remember you. I mean, my big thing is I use video to stay in front of my sphere so that that's what they think of. You know, I'm not, it's not, it's not necessarily a prospecting thing. Like, you know, I'd like it to be and, it, you know, can be, but it's more of like, let me just stay in front of the people I know. I know lots of people. I've been here for, you know, 42 years in the same community. Let me stay in front of these people so they don't forget that I'm an agent. Dude, when I was a brand new agent, I saw a friend sell his house and buy a new one. And like, you, you didn't call me, bro. I was like, I didn't know you were an agent. <laughs> like, you got to hey. shout it from the rooftops, man. Yeah. Hey, here, this is, this is a side note, but people think, oh, I, I don't want to be obnoxious and be in their face all the time. Dude, do you think Gary V and Grant Cardone worry about being obnoxious or in their face all the time? Those guys are worth millions and millions of dollars. They're the most obnoxious presences on social media on, you know, on three or four platforms, and they are killing it. Some people hate them. So yeah. what? If nobody hates you, nobody's going to love you. Don't be vanilla. Don't be the regular guy that's... I'm too afraid I'm going to offend somebody with all of my content. It's like, dude, get out there. Agreed. Agreed. You know, I was actually watching one of Gary Vee's keynotes over the weekend when I was, when I was working and that's what he said. He's like, my job as a marketer is to ruin every platform. Um, and you know, in terms of like, you know, getting in front of people and you know, of course, as you alluded to before, you want to make sure you're ruining it with good content. You don't want to just be putting out crap. Right. But as yeah. long as you're in front of people, that's going to help you become top of mind. And, you know, I love what you said about becoming a resource in your local area, because going back to cold calling and, and door knocking, you know, if you're door knocking for three hours a day, you're going to be exhausted and you're dead. But if you make spend that three hours to make one video, that will prospect for you 24-7, 365, as long as you tag it right and have the right SEO. So the power yeah is immense in terms of the ROI of your time invested. Oh yeah, that's a great way to look at 100%, man. Definitely, so I love that, man. Those are five banger topics. I, I absolutely love that and I'll list them below so people can go back, rewatch and things like that. Now, do you have any tips for people in terms of getting started with the content creation? Because I know for me, when I got started, I just use things like you know iMovie and I use my phone and I try to make it as simple as possible. Do you have any tips, tricks for people that are, are you know a bit nervous getting started with the content creation part? Yeah, yeah, it's don't get overwhelmed. A, you can just do lives. I mean, Facebook Live, like you said, beyond just getting started and getting and getting you know a lot of a lot of practice on their Facebook lives, as you said, they promote it. When when, when Facebook, YouTube, or Instagram see a live video, there you're at the top of the stream. So that's a great way to get cranking. And there's no music, no sound effects, no editing, no warning about it. Just go ahead and frame yourself properly, like get your head, just your simple things, right? Get your head top of frame, right? A lot of people have their, I mean, I've seen, I saw one of my lenders, she sent out a video and she's like down here. It's like, no, you want to make it look a little bit pro. So here's just, here's yeah. quick, quick, you know, five seconds of production tips, if that, if that helps, right? Number two, get good lighting. I'm sitting in front of a window, right? I've got lights, but sit in front of a window if you don't have any money. It doesn't have to cost a fortune. Use your phone. The thing shoots 4K, shoots HD, shoots time lapses, shoots slow motion, shoots amazing things. Um, and for audio quality, you want to get close to the mic because if you're across the room, it's going to sound like you're across the room and sound terrible. I see content creators on YouTube that have like a million subscribers and it still sounds like they have the mic across the room. It's like, you want to you level up a little bit? Get close to the mic. You want to edit? I, if you're just starting out, use iMovie. I hate iMovie because it's so simple, I can't wrap my brain around it. But if you're on a Mac, use iMovie. If you're on 
on a PC and use, you know, what is it, movie? I don't have PCs, but movie maker, whatever. There's, there's a million applications out there. The program you use doesn't matter. Use the one, if you're using one, you're comfortable with it, that's great. I use, personally, Adobe Premiere Pro. When I was an editor in Hollywood, I started with Final Cut Pro, then I went to Avid, which a lot of the feature films are made on, then I went to Premiere Pro when they killed the real Final Cut. Now they've got Final Cut Pro 10, which is, which is great. Some people like it. I don't like the way it works, but it's, but it's great. Um, if you want, if you're like, hey, I don't have any money, I have Mac or PC, doesn't matter, but I wanna just start with the good ones and I don't have to relearn software, there's a program called DaVinci Resolve that has a free version that's pro and killer. And that'll, you'd never outgrow that thing. And if you do, you can just get the paid version. And if, once you learn something like DaVinci Resolve, if you want to go to Final Cut Pro 10 or Premiere or Avid or one of the more pro programs, you can learn it in a few hours, you know, the basics in a few hours because they all work the same. So don't get overwhelmed. In, and here's another thing. Editing, people go, oh, I'm overwhelmed. Like, where do I put everything? Ah, it's so confusing. There's so many buttons. And, you know, it can be if you just look at it for the first time, right? But just think of it this way. All you're doing is putting, and I, dude, I was, I was, one of the first movies I ever worked on was Ice Age, the first Ice Age. And I was like, I, I was stressed because I like a tech boy moving into editing, didn't know exactly how do you make a commercial out of a movie. And I just had to tell myself, it's like, okay, it's just one video clip and then the next video clip yeah. and then the next video clip. It's just tell a little story, just put them in order. And one power tip is when you record, if you're going to do a sit down talking head video like we're, like we're doing here, just go ahead and outline a script. Don't write word for word. Outline the script and then look at it. I use Evernote. Look at it on my phone. Use Evernote. Then look at the camera and go, Hey, today, guys, I'm going to talk to you about what's going on in Simi Valley. It's super exciting. Can't wait to share with you. And I go, look at it and go, okay. Did you guys know there's a carnival coming in town at the beach? I can't. I messed up. Let me do it again. And then do take, 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 right? Keep the camera rolling for that half hour or whatever it takes you to do it for that two-minute video. Do as many takes as you need. And just cut out the bad parts and slap them together. You're done, right? Doesn't, yeah. you, don't need, you don't have to have B-roll and sound effects and music and other shots. I mean, that all makes it more fun. But as long as your content is good and you're delivering it quickly, it's, it's going to be gold. Exactly what I do for my videos. I outline, you know, the, the, the main key points. And then after each point that I make, I stop, pause, so I can see where it, it goes silent in the video, chop it out, away you go. So that's, that's awesome, it. man. It doesn't have to be hard. Any program can do that, whether it's on your phone or on your, on your computer. Exactly. And keep it simple. So there's two more things I'd like to touch on before we wrap up here. The first is, do you see any trends or do you have any predictions for video content in the future or how it's going to impact real estate or if it's going to become, you know, the absolute be all end all, you know, what are your thoughts in terms of going forward with video content? My thoughts are if you're not doing video, you're going to completely miss the boat because right now about 85% of content on the internet is video. And if all you're doing is chucking pads and making cold calls, I mean, that's going to work probably a few more years. It may never, I mean, in-person contact, door knocking will probably always work. Cold calls, people are getting more and more savvy, less likely to answer their phone. I think, you know, I, it, you know people kill it with cold calls. If, you, if you're on the phone eight hours a day, you're going to, wake, you're going to wake, make way more money than I am right now, I'm sure. Uh, eight hours a day, pounding, 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 just because of sheer numbers. But do you know anyone that does that or can do that? I don't, I don't think it's sustainable. And it just gets worse and worse every day because of the way technology is going. Video, I think, is the number one way. You're going to be irrelevant. There are agents. We have a, we have a friend of ours that goes to our church. And she's like, my, my business. I mean, she's, bless her. I love her. But she's, but she's towards the end of her career. And she's not doing any of this stuff. And you see people that have been in the business for years and years going, I don't know why my business is drying up. It's because you're not staying current. You have to make video content. And the beauty is, Nobody's doing it. I mean, when I first started, I looked around, and I'm like, dude, there's, there's one guy, this guy named Larry, that was making regular video content, and it was all market updates. And it was, it was good, it was great, the guy's killing it. You know, but he, there's one guy in my whole market that was making regular video content. You can be the guy now, and yes. then be that guy in the future. So jump in now while it's, you think, oh, it's still, it's, there's too much competition. There's no competition in the real estate market. There's none. So it doesn't matter that there are 2 billion active logged in users on YouTube every single month. 
and that they're all watching PewDiePie and Casey Neistat, there's nobody doing it for your market. Be that guy. Yep. Yep. A hundred percent, man. And you know, I love that you say that, especially because I find as time evolves, our job as agents is becoming less and less of a demand in the sense that we used to be the gatekeepers of information. You absolutely 100% needed us to get into properties, to write offers, to do anything real estate related. And now that that's not becoming the case because of tools and technology and buyers and sellers have more information at their hands, we now need to provide value in a different way. And if you can provide value by becoming a resource using video content, that again can help you stand out miles above your competition as things come on. Totally, totally. And it's kind of interesting, the news, we just learned today in the news that people still want full-time established committed real estate agents because who just checked, did you hear who checked out of the US today, announced it? Purple Bricks, do you know who Purple Bricks is? Yeah, I do, 100%. I think they're in Canada. They are. I think they're staying there, but in the US, they're like, we said, we don't want you, because you get, I mean, I, I we're, we're in the middle of a transaction right now with a Purple Bricks agent, he's great. He manages, you know, a bunch of agents and stuff and cities or whatever. So he's got that thing. I'm like, dude, what's the, who would come to Purple Bricks? And he's like, agents that don't have any business, agents that want leads. And it's, you're not getting the top, age, top agents with Purple Bricks who is a discount brokerage. People need the handholding. This is the biggest transaction most people are going to ever make in their lives. And it's super stressful and super complicated. And there's a ton of legalities and paperwork. You want a full-time professional to help you with that. People do need us and you want them to know you exist by breaking this thing out all the time. Agreed, man. And I know that, you know, one of my good buddies, Glenn Twiddle, repping it down in Australia, he just mentioned too that they're they're packing up and heading out of Australia as well. So I think that's crazy, man. I love everything that you mentioned. So I guess the final thing I'd like to leave the stage open and see if you have anything that you want to share with the audience, whether it be tips, tricks, tools, misconceptions, I'll leave it up to you to say any final words about video. The, The very most important thing is that you just start. Don't go, wait, I'm going to wait till I get the haircut and the new clothes and the new camera and I figure out the perfect script and I finish all these courses. I want everybody that finishes this thing to start right now. If you've never made a video in your life, I want you to pick up your phone, if you don't have Instagram, download it and, and create a story right now. That The most important thing is to start and you will, you will be the age that the people turn to because like I've said three or four or five times, nobody else is doing it. This is your time. It's not too late. It's not too late. The ship has not left the harbor. The ship hasn't even been built yet. Now is this golden era of, you know, like Gary Vaynerchuk talks about, you know, the commodity is attention now. Attention is all over these things. It's all over video. In one little other tip, 85% of video watched on Facebook is watched without what? Without what? Without what? Without, what without audio. Without audio. So caption your files. You can go to rev.com. And for a dollar a minute, you can get your, your videos captioned and it's so worth it because people want to know what you're saying. And if it's not interesting and compelling, they're just, they're gone. And number, number last, last tip is always, always, always start every video with a hook that's going to get them in. Whether it's, whether it's audio, you saying something like super exciting, be animated. That's the other thing. Or whether it's something like visually explosion, whatever, whatever you can do, man, to get their attention. So always, always hook them and then keep them engaged at the end of the video. And the more, and you know this, but YouTube's biggest metric that they measure to determine whether or not they're going to serve up more of your videos is watch time. Yeah. So make them watch at the end, keep them engaged at the end. At the end, I, I just, I can't stop talking about this. So here's, Here's one more tip that I learned. You know who Tim Schmoyer is? Yeah. I took, I took his course. Like, I keep learning, man. I was in the entertainment industry 18 years, but I learn every day more stuff. I mean, I learned from 14-year-old beauty bloggers and guys that are YouTube guys. I just keep learning because this stuff's super fun and you got you to stay current. And one thing he taught me is, end abruptly. When you create your videos, people go, hey, thanks for watching. We got new videos coming out tomorrow and the next day. And I'm in a dimension. I'm an agent in Simi Valley. And uh, I'm, I'm really good. And uh, music comes up, drone shot, logo. You can reach me here on Facebook and on Instagram. And, and they go on for a, you know, a minute or two, just rambling. And people checked out. The second you signal that your video is ending with your, with your outro music, they're done. 
deliver value. And you, go, you know, I always like on my videos that I create for realtors, I'm like, hey, I can't wait to see the stories you have to tell. Out, done. It's done. So keep them engaged at the end and make them go, wait, that, that was it. I want more. 100%. Last step. Yeah. That's amazing. I, you know, I, if you guys are watching this, the best thing to do is just literally shut this shit off and then go start recording a video because Trevor right here has given you the rubric. I'm going to, in the description, of course, I'm going to list those top five tips and make sure you go follow man. Cause this is a banger. This is everything you guys need. You guys don't need to go watch another single video on videos for realtors other than this. He gave you the step-by-step -step rule broke. He told you what videos matter and he told you how to get started, which is just getting freaking started. So Trevor, man, I absolutely love it. You crushed this. And, uh, Again, man, thank you so much for, for being on here. Thanks, Mike. I can't wait to see the stuff that your viewers create, man. It's going to be awesome. 100%, guys. So on that note, if you guys do create a video after this video, drop it in the comments. I want to see your stuff. We're, we're happy to build the community here. We want to see other people crushing it. We're not here to compete. We're here to collaborate. So again, guys, thank you so much. Trevor, thanks so much for your time. Hopefully thanks, Mike. you guys got some serious value from it because I know even I did. So we will see you next time. Thanks again, as always. Make sure you subscribe. Peace.